Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to be taking your material from polygon.com, bringing it into Maya using our material converter, and then finally rendering it out using Redshift. Before we get started though, let's take a look at the materials we'll be using during this video, or the files I should say. First of all, we'll be using the Wood Flooring 044 material, and we're also going to need the material converter add-on for Maya, both of which I already have downloaded, um, but I'll be including a link below the video so you can get them too. Okay, let's head over to Maya. Okay, so this is the scene we'll be using today, and it's a it's a very simple scene. It's just the floor plane, um, a dome light for HDR lighting, um, and I'm using the perspective camera as our rendering camera, and that's uh, that's literally it. But before we get started, we're going to need to bring in, or install, I should say, the material converter. Now, I already have it installed. You can see the button for it here underneath the custom panel. But let's talk you through the process of doing that. So, once you have the zip file downloaded from the website, extract the whole thing into a folder, like I've done so here. I placed mine on my desktop. And there's a few files uh, inside that. So the one we need at the moment is this installer script. Um, so when you've found that, just drag that anywhere onto the viewport, and then you'll then be prompted to basically find that folder that we just dragged from. Um, so as I said, mine's on my desktop, and then I'm clicking on the folder, and then you've got mater Polygon Material Converter within that. When you have that selected, um, it will say that the Material Converter has been updated for me, because I've already got it installed for you, it would say installed. Um, but that's it, that's the whole installation process the converter is now part of Maya um, which is a uh, which is good so let's click on the converter button itself and take a look at how we use it we've got a couple of options to fill out the first one is the textures folder now this is where you tell the converter where you keep all your materials from polygon um, so I'm gonna go find mine here they are and as you can see I've got a whole bunch of different polygon materials already saved and if I were to select this folder the converter would bring them all into uh, Maya um, for you to then pick and choose what ones you want to assign to what. What I want to do though is just bring in the specific material that we're using, wood flooring 044, so I'm going to select that folder instead and now the converter will just bring in that one material. As you can see there it says one material found. Next up is the renderer. By default the converter will select whatever renderer is currently assigned to your project. Um, this is already set up for Redshift because that's what we're working in today and the converter knows this and has automatically selected it. If you do need to change it though, uh, the other options are just to click away. Below that, we've got some advanced settings. Now by default, these are exactly perfect for our uses today, so I won't be touching any of them. Um, but if you need to make any adjustments, oh, that's where you do it. But I'm just going to click on Convert and it will say all materials loaded successfully and that's us done with the converter. It's done its job. Now we have the material brought in, let's click on the Hypershade window so we can assign it to our floor plane. Once I've opened that up you'll see we've got our wooden floor material and if I right mouse button on it and take a look at the graph network it will show the uh, the textures that have been brought in uh, a couple of other nodes. Now you'll be noticing there's no displacement texture. Now that's something to do with the way uh, Maya likes to load up its nodes. If you click on this final node here and then click on this input and output connections button it will bring in the displacement nodes. Um, so now we've got all the textures there. Okay, so now I'm going to click on the floor plane. I'm going to right mouse button on or hold the right mouse button on our material and then assign material to selection. So now our wooden floor material has been assigned to this floor plane. Yeah. So at this stage, I'm going to click on the IPR button, the interactive rendering, and that will, there we go, um, load up in this uh, render window. Anyway, sorry, I had a really big gust of wind there that uh, distracted me a little bit. I'm not sure why we've got this box though. I'm gonna just, ooh, there we go. Right, so if I bring up the hyper shades again, because there is one adjustment we're going to need to make. Now this material is looking pretty close to the reference images on our website, pretty close. Um, the only thing is the reflections are a little more blurred, uh, a little less glossy than we'd, than we'd like. So what we need to do is make an adjustment to the gloss map. Now you will find this occasionally. Uh, different different rendering engines have different implementations of PBR that do things slightly differently. Um, so maps will sometimes need some minor adjustments to get them looking the way that you want. Um, 
So, if I go down to the redshift uh, bit here and then type in multiply. In fact, no, it's a default male one, isn't it? Yes. This multiply divide node. Yeah, I'm going to click on that, which will bring in one of those nodes. And I'm going to name this uh, roughness adjust. Now, the reason I'm calling it roughness and not gloss is because our gloss texture is actually being inverted. Yeah. Uh, and turning it into a gloss, uh, sorry, from a gloss map into a roughness map because it's a roughness map that Redshift is expecting, and roughness maps are just inverted gloss maps. So, our roughness, I didn't take the name, did it? Roughness adjust. That's better. So, I'm going to feed the color from the, pick the right one, from the, uh, roughness map into the adjustment and then I'm going to feed that into the reflection but you'll see at this point it won't take this type of value and the reason being is the shader is expecting a a float image rather than a full color one um, so the quickest way in redshift to get around that is if I click on this little plus symbol it will give us the uh, free the, the RGB channels of our of our image and because they're all essentially the same in terms of value um, it doesn't matter we can just take one of those feed that into roughness and it will work just fine as you can see we're still getting our roughness map in uh, in there but with this node now in place we have this value here because I've plugged it into uh, in fact just to keep things uh, exactly the same I'm gonna I'm actually gonna delete that connection I'm just gonna bring in the red channel so red to the x input and then x into the roughness just so we know it's this first value that we need to adjust okay i hope that makes sense now we've got that in place if i were to turn this down to zero we'd have a very shiny looking floor because that's completely negating what the gloss map's doing it's just giving us a black output which in terms of a roughness map is 100 percent reflective yeah and if i times if i put that back to one then we get our our, our map back so this is essentially a it's a multiply operation. We're multiplying the values within the map by the number that's here. Now, if you multiply something by one, you're not making any change to it. If you multiply something by zero, the answer is going to be zero. So that's that that's that explains the the effect this is having on our image. So what we want is something in the middle, probably about a point six five or so. I think maybe a point six. Yeah. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I'm also going to just expand that a little bit, and just lower down the uh, exposure just a tad, and maybe mess with the brightness too. There we go. So yeah, that's uh, that's how you bring in a polygon material, and. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's a good render. So in summary, we've downloaded a material from polygon.com, brought it into Maya using our uh, material converter, uh, made a minor adjustment to the gloss map uh, via a multiply node, um, and then rendered it out using Redshift.